Hey everyone, it's the Ionic Guy, back with a new video. And this one is a video that I've been looking forward to shooting since I got the car. What we're gonna go over today is how you could potentially power your entire house just from this outlet. And you're going to do that using the V2L adapter, which allows you to plug an extension cord into the car and run it to whatever you want. But in this case, I installed a generator inlet, which is going to allow me to backfeed my 200 amp electrical panel and selectively pick which circuits I wanna provide power to. Obviously, we're not gonna be able to power energy intensive loads like a dryer or a stove top or an oven. We'll be able to power all the lighting in the house as it's LED and doesn't draw a whole lot of current. We'll be able to power all the outlets, the microwave, uh, tea kettle, some other basic circuits. We'll also be able to power my oil-fired boiler. So if we lose power in the winter time, the house will be able to remain heated. So this is pretty exciting. I don't own a generator and being able to plug my car into the house is gonna be a game changer. We don't lose power all that often, but It'll be nice to have in case of an emergency. So let's go over the prerequisite electrical requirements you'll need if you do want to do something like this. So this is my 200 amp GE, just run of the mill electrical panel. And what I've installed up here is known as an interlock. And what it's going to do is prevent power from coming in here from the car, coming back through the breaker that's going to feed the panel and then feed back out to the power lines where the linesman might be doing repairs. And the biggest issue is people have generators and they might do something similar to this, but they don't have an interlock in place and they may forget to kill the main breaker. And what that could do is allow 110 volts to get out to the street, get to a transformer and get stepped up to 15, 20, 25,000 volts, whatever it may be, and could kill a linesman. So this is a critical piece of the system. Do not attempt to do this without an interlock. Now the next part of the puzzle is going to be the generator inlet. And this is gonna be very similar to a setup that somebody would use if they were using a gasoline generator, a diesel generator, a propane generator. This is gonna be where you plug the generator into the house where it will eventually backfeed this 15 amp breaker. So I like to err on the side of caution so over here, I installed an L5-20, which is a 20 amp inlet receptacle. So what this allows me to do is plug in a 20 amp twist lock, and then that gets converted to a standard 15 amp three prong. Now, something I really wanna stress, if you're going to do a system similar to this, please use high quality electrical components. I'm using a 12 gauge, outdoor rated south wire extension cord. And you can see here, it is UL certified. Please don't buy chintzy extension cords off Amazon. This can be the easiest point of failure in the whole system. And these will catch on fire, they will melt. It is not worth putting your life in the hands of an extension cord that's not UL certified, that's not rated, for the amount of current you're gonna put through it, you need to really get good high quality components. Everything in my system is UL rated and oversized for the situation. I'll leave links in the description to some of the items that I used for my installation. Obviously, get what works for your needs. And if you don't know what works for your needs, contact an electrician. As you can see, I have a solar system. I have an 8.6 kilowatt system. It utilizes N-phase inverters. And if you know anything about solar, one of the new requirements in the last few years has been to have rapid shutdown. So if the solar panels sense that the electricity coming from the grid has ceased, they automatically shut down so that your panels won't backfeed the grid and possibly shock a line person. As you can see, the V2L adapter is rated for 15 amps, which is your standard circuit in any house. And what this adapter allows is for you to plug 
that 15 amp extension cord into the car. And you can see that you can have it either normal or upside down, depending on what type of extension cord you have. It might be limited to the way it fits in here, and you might have to leave this door open. I don't think that's a big deal unless you're going to be keeping this outside, in which case you want to shut this so that water doesn't get into it. Now to simulate a power outage, I'm going to take off the main breaker. Before you ever backfeed an electrical panel via any type of generator, you always want to turn off all the breakers in your panel. You do this because when you bring the generator up, you don't want to overload it and put too much stress on it. Now that applies more to, to a gas generator than a, a large battery, but it's still a good practice to get in the habit of doing. Because I have solar and the solar comes in on this 40 amp breaker, it's completely disconnected from the electrical panel at this point. But to err on the side of caution, I'm going to open up my inverter box. and I'm gonna kill all the breakers coming from the solar panels. So the first part of this process of getting the car connected to the house is going to be fitting the V2L adapter to the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop open the charge port door, we're gonna remove the dust cover, and we're simply going to stick that into the car. This is now locked to the car, so it cannot be removed accidentally. We'll open this flap that gives us easier access to the outlet. Now we're going to insert our extension cord into the car. And we'll shut this flap. On the other end of this extension cord, I'm going to plug in my twist lock adapter. And I'm going to plug the car into the generator inlet. As you can see, the car is now plugged into my home. So now that the main breaker to the house is powered off, that allows me to slide this interlock to the left and it allows me to turn on this 15 amp breaker that is connected to this outlet, which is connected to the car. So in order for the V2L adapter to be utilized, you have to come here and press this button. You'll hear a chime in the car, and this green light up top means that it's now active. So now here in the Ionic 5, from our electric vehicle screen, we click EV charge transfer, and here we can limit how much power can be drawn from the battery. So right now I have a 77% charge, and let's say I wanna have at least 50% battery to be able to travel if I have to leave the house during a power outage. So now all I do is simply drag this slider to 50%, and now the battery will not discharge to the house past the 50% mark. So from the electric vehicle screen, if we click on the battery, we will see the current charge level as well as the cutoff point for V2L. And up here in the top left-hand portion of the screen, we get a readout of how much power is currently being drawn from the battery. So because I currently have no breakers on to the home, we're drawing zero kilowatts. So back here at the electrical panel, I'm going to start turning on breakers one by one until I get the house back to a powered state. So I think the first circuit I wanna try and put on is my refrigerator, which is circuit 25. So I'll go down here to circuit 25, flip that on. And back here in the car, we can see the refrigerator is drawing about 400 watts, which is well within the car's limit of about 1800. So now here in the house, you can see none of the lights in the kitchen are turning on. but inside the refrigerator is good to go. 
So if you are going to do something like this, something you need to keep in mind is that here in the United States and Canada, we utilize 240 volts in our homes. We have three wires coming into the house. Two are hot and the last one is a grounding conductor. So from one hot to the ground, you have 120 volts and from the other hot to the ground, you have 120 volts. So in this panel, there is two separate bus bars, each one providing 120 volts to ground, but each of those bus bars alternates between this breaker and that breaker, that breaker and that breaker. So you're only gonna be getting 120 volts from this breaker to ground. So because we are only utilizing a single pole breaker, we can only get 120 volts to ground. So only every other breaker in this panel is going to be energized from the V2L adapter. So if the breaker that I wanted to be powered by the car wasn't already on the bus bar associated with this breaker that's being backfed, I either moved it up one spot and moved the one that I didn't want down one spot just so that I could have as many of the circuits that I wanted powered by the car. Now I know from my solar software connected to the house, what baseline the house typically runs at. And on an average day, unless we're cooking, doing laundry, the house draws around 800 watts, which is less than half of what the V2L adapter is capable of putting out. So by having all of my general use circuits connected to the V2L adapter, I should be completely fine. So if you decide to do it this way, what you're gonna wanna do is start flipping breakers one by one, the ones that are important to you, general lighting, general outlets, maybe one for your router so you can have internet. But you're gonna wanna go through, flip them one by one, and you're just going to want to monitor that number. As long as that number is less than 1.8, you should be more than fine. So when you start flipping breakers on your panel, what you don't wanna do is turn on any of the 240 volt circuits. Like this one is my dryer right here. And if you have this breaker on, what can happen is voltage can go through one side of this breaker, go to the dryer, and then that voltage can travel through the heating elements and come back on this breaker. So I would just suggest that you keep all of these breakers that are 240 volts powered off as long as you are back feeding the panel. For those of you who want even more granular information about what the V2L adapter is providing to the house, you can put in line with your incoming extension cord what's called a kilowatt which basically allows you to see line voltage, how many amps are being drawn, current wattage, the hertz, and you can even have a total kilowatt hours um, taken out of the car's battery. So I'm gonna leave this in place. I'm gonna put it on watts, which is going to total all the current being drawn from the battery. And I'm gonna start flipping breakers on until I get everything on that I want. So because the car is currently putting out 120 volts exactly, if you multiply that by what it's limited to, which is 15 amps, that's exactly 1800 watts. So that should be the maximum amount of power that we should be able to pull out of the battery with this adapter. So I've got all my critical circuits flipped on and you can see right now we're only drawing about 615 watts. And that's going to change depending on the state of things like the refrigerator, whether the compressor's on or not. I have my furnace on right now, so this number could spike up a little bit when the boiler kicks on. But right now, only 314 watts used. So my boiler is currently powered by the car, and that gives me all the heating I need for the home, as well as my indirect water heater for domestic hot water. So what I've just done is I went through my house, I turned on every single light, which we would never do in this situation. The boiler is currently running, the refrigerator's on, 
and you can see I'm maxing out at 1.2 kilowatts, which gives me even a little bit of wiggle room here. So with a few selective lighting circuits on, the router running, my computer running, the furnace running and the refrigerator running, only about 500 watts is currently being drawn. So now we're gonna do a little bit of math. So you can only set this to draw down to 20% of the battery. So for the long range Ionic 5, the battery capacity is 77.4. We'll multiply that by 80%. So we can use 62 kilowatt hours of this battery to power the house. So 62 kilowatt hours divided by 500 watts. That's in hours, we'll divide that by 24. I can power my house for just over five days. And that's with everything that we would need to get by. So now I'm gonna do a test and see what happens when we draw too much current for the system to handle. If you exceed 15 amps, which is 1800 watts, this device will trip and it will no longer provide power to the house. So there is a fail safe if you overload it. If for whatever reason this doesn't trip at 15 amps, this breaker here will trip at 15 amps. So you're going to be protected. You don't have to worry about doing any damage to your battery or to your electrical panel or the circuits in your home. So I just ran a 1200 watt microwave and an electric tea kettle at the same time. And I came back out to the car after they stopped running. And this is the screen that I get. It shows nothing about the V2L being connected. So in the event that you trip the V2L adapter, what you have to do is come back to the car, turn it off, put it back into accessory mode, and then it should come back on. So you can see we're back drawing 500 watts. So something that is nice is it seems that V2L will continue running even if the car is not in accessory mode. So you can see right now, now it's back in accessory. Now it's in accessory mode. Car is powered off and it still seems to be delivering power. So that's cool. So because we're currently completely disconnected from the grid, you won't know when the power is going to be back on from your local utility. So unless you can see your neighbor's lights come on and you know they don't have a generator, you're gonna to have to come out here whenever you want, turn off the power from the car, turn the main breaker back on, and see if you get power back from the utility. So to disconnect the car from the house, the first thing I'm going to do is go through the electrical panel and start turning off all the breakers for the circuits that I had powered. I'm then going to turn off the breaker that's being fed by power from the car. I'm then going to go to the V2L adapter and I'm gonna hit the power off button. No power is currently flowing from the car any longer. Now over here, I'm going to disconnect this. And for whatever reason, if there was power still coming from the car, this does not have any exposed prongs. So you wouldn't be able to get shocked from it. Over at the car, I'm just gonna pull out the extension cord, shut the flap. So to remove the V2L, all you're going to do is hit the unlock button. And you can now remove that, set that to the side, close your charging port. We'll come back over to the electrical panel. We'll slide the interlock all the way to the right and main breakers back on. And I'll start going through here and flipping the breakers back on. If you have solar on your house, you can then go in, turn your breakers back on for the solar. If you have a disconnect on the outside of the house, you can turn that back on as well. That's gonna do it for this video. This adapter is awesome. I know Hyundai said that they have a system coming out sometime this year that's going to allow you to plug in every night to charge, but then also feed power back to the grid at night. 
to power your home. So I'll be looking forward to seeing what they come up with later this year. Obviously, do this at your own risk. I'm not a licensed electrician. I did attend electrical school and trained to become an electrician. So I am comfortable around electrical, wiring, what have you. So if I were not an expert or had any sort of training, I wouldn't recommend doing this. Definitely do it at your own risk. If you'd prefer, you could contact a local electrician and ask for a generator inlet and they would be more than happy to install something similar to what I have and you'll be able to do something just like this. But you obviously are limited by that 1800 watt capacity. So if you have a very large house with a lot of say heat pumps, uh, electric baseboard heating, it's gonna be on a case by case basis. The fact that my house has an oil fired burner, it doesn't use a whole lot of electricity. So I can get all that energy out of the oil with very little electricity coming from the battery. So it's a good backup system to have, at least here in the Northeast United States, where we have cold winters and electric heat just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, except for heat pumps. Let me know what you think of this system. Is this something you might pursue or will you simply run an extension cord from the car into the house and run some cords throughout the house? I like this because you don't have to worry about cords all over the place, tripping. Um, it's just a nice clean installation, a nice simple solution. Everything's mostly in place for when the power does go out, so you don't have to spend a lot of time setting anything up. It's mostly just flipping breakers and running that one extension cord from the car to the house. So as always, thank you for watching. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, it really helps me out. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, take care.